Oh my God, guys, Roderick Strong. Roderick Strong just made his AEW debut to save Adam Cole from a beatdown from the JAS Society. Oh my God, this was completely unexpected. I did not see this coming. I'm not even sure if Roderick had got released or if he let his contract expire from WWE. But man, this just came out of nowhere. Guys, I've uh, just been watching Dynamite a good 15, 20 something minutes ago. And man, I mean, first Adam Cole comes out, calls out Chris Jericho. He's angry after what happened last week when he was handcuffed uh, to the ropes watching uh, his wife get beat down. I mean, not his wife, but his girlfriend get beat, uh, Britt Baker get beat down with Kendall sticks by the outcast. And at the same time, you know, him getting beaten with the JS Society. So he wanted to get back at Jericho, but, you know, Jericho refused to, to get in the ring to come face to face with Adam Cole. And instead he had his goons, you know, the, uh, uh, J Jake Hager and uh, Matt Millard and um, and uh, what is that other guy's name? Oh, he's mixed up their names, but um, he had all of them come out and and, and uh, Danny Garcia. They all came out and attacked them. And first, the best friends came, um, but they were outnumbered. And then, uh, unfamiliar music played. Now, this specific song that played "Heartache." You know, I've heard this song before. I'm not sure if, uh, you know, if, if Roger could use this his pre WWE days, like when he was in PWG and, you know, Ring of Honor and other uh, promotions he wrestled in. But, you know, once the name popped up, I was really shocked to see this, especially when you consider the fact that, like I said, I'm not even sure. I do know he was trying to get out of his contract. And I do know that he wasn't a diamond mine, but, you know, he was constantly losing, taking L's all the time. One of the last uh, major matches I remember him being in was the unification match with the, uh, with the, uh, with the Cruiserweight title and the uh, North American title. And, uh, and it was um, uh, Carmelo Hayes who beat him for that. And then, you know, you had the whole thing with uh, Dom and Mine kind of ripping apart where he was kind of like the guy who seemed like he was trying to break them up or whatever he was doing. You know, he had that whole thing going on. So, you know, there was just a period where you just didn't see him for a long time. And, you know, after you saw Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish come to AEW, of course, I don't know what happened to Kyle O'Reilly. You know, Bobby Fish had left. Uh, had a brief stunt in, in uh, Impact, and I haven't seen him since, but I don't know what happened to Kyle O'Reilly. I know he was injured, but I don't know if he's still on the shelf. And so, you know, th it's just, you figured he was going to come to AEW to save uh, one of his close friends at Adam Cole, uh, kind of like a reformation of you. I, I would love to see, you know, at this point, I'm not sure how likely it is, especially with Bobby Fish also kind of doing boxing now on the side. But I would love to see, you know, if Kyle Riley can get healthy or whatever going on with him. You know, you get the get the band back together. And maybe they could uh, uh, actually rekindle what they were kind of shooting for uh, around the time that Adam and, um, and uh, Kyle Riley and Bobby was hurt which was a battle between them and the elites, which, of course, now, you know, they're, they're baby faces. So right now wouldn't be the time to do it as they're building up between, you know, Adam Cole and uh, Chris Jericho, J.S. And so, you know, they're not going to do that now. And like, but I would like, you know, that would be something nice for them to pick back up on if, if Kyle O'Reilly can get healthy and if, Bobby Fish were to come back, that could be something they could, you know, go back with at some point, perhaps. But I'm really interested to see what they're going to go with this. Um, you know, like I said, very unexpected. It was even more, you know, great to see these guys embrace the uh, last time we seen them, uh, you know, st you know, in the rain together. 
uh, was actually around the time Roderick was trying to, where he was uh, pretending, where Adam was pretending like he felt bad about it, you know, about attacking Kyle O'Reilly, and then he low blowed Roger Strong, and Roger was trying to be like the peacemaker or what or whatnot. Uh, and that was like the last time, but it was nice to see these guys embrace. And so, you know, it's funny because Roger was kind of like the guy who, you know, he wasn't one of the original members of the group. He didn't join until like a year, well, like several months after the group had already formed, um, you know, uh, back in April of 2018, he joined the group. And I remember because he turned on Pete Dunne in their match. I think it was the Dusty Rose Classic or so. Um, and then that's when he joined the group. But, you know, originally it was just Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, and Bobby Fish. And they, they had a long history. Uh, Adam, uh, uh, Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish had teamed together. The, re the, uh, the Red uh, Dragons, the, the Red Dragons, however you pronounce it. I don't think I'm saying it right. So I know their history goes back to Ring of Honor and several other promotions as well as, you know, the relationship with Kyle O'Reilly and Adam Cole. But Roger Strong, you know, he joined a little bit later, but he still have that, you know, overall connection. So um, it was just, I'm always going to miss that UE music because even before they left, you know, it was something that CFO had produced, I believe. But... You know, that this is a nice, fresh start for him. And I was definitely intrigued to see this. And a really decent dynamite, you know. The tension between the pillars continues. You know, we're going to see a tag match next week where if uh, Jungle Boy and uh, Derby win, if they beat Sammy Guevara and NJF, then they will be added to the match, uh, you know, and it will become a full... A Pillars, a fatal four way for the AW champ World Championship, but you figure what happened after, uh, you know, MJF, um, you know, helped Sammy to, to pretend as if he got attacked by the skateboard with Derby to get himself disqualified, just like last week he clocked uh, Jungle Boy with his Don Marine to get him counted out. So he figured his tactics, you know, was not going to last very long. To get away from, with them having a singles match at um at uh, Dub or nothing, you figured that was going to happen. So looking forward to that. Uh, you also had the match with Jay Cargo and um, Taya Valkyrie, where she was banned from using uh, the Valhalla, and she, you know, in the sense of not using it, she ended up getting pinned. But you know, uh, Jay grabbed the tight so. We'll definitely see a match between these two likely again at Dub or nothing. Um, I mean, you, I mean, so you had a, you had some solid things here. The main, you know, the final match with Kenny and Ch Takeshja uh, beating the Butcher and the Blade, and then being attacked, set up first by Brian Danielson, and then attacked by the uh, BCC trying to uh, act as if they were going to recruit to contest. To Kestia, and then only to attack him as well in a brutal beatdown and off the show. So that was just completely chaotic, even with the Young Bucks getting involved, trying to help out. They uh, also uh, were attacked. So, you know, the whole thing with that was just kind of all over the place. Uh, so, yeah, overall, um, you know, it's just really, just a really solid show. Overall, you know, every match, even the opener, uh, Orange Cassidy defending this uh, international uh, championship, North America, uh, Atlantic International now um, against Bandito was a great opener. You know, he retained the belt yet again, uh, continuing his successful title defenses uh, with the belt. So that was a great way to open off the show. Um, and I do want to say that the match between Sammy and Derby was a really good, as they usually do have great matches. Uh, as outside of the ending of it, it actually was good. Derby, I mean, you know, Sammy busted out a, a moonsault um, on Derby, hit like a, a um, I don't even know what the name of the move was, like a, 
exactly you would call it 360 or 450 went to him on the table outside the ring of, of uh, Spanish fly so you know they he definitely brought it but um yeah like I said some really um you know really solid matches a uh, warlow squash some uh some local enhancement talent now he's gonna you know they're setting up the bill with him and a uh, luchasaurus so a lot of stuff going on there but yeah i just mainly want to talk about roger strong's uh, aw debut i definitely think this is something fresh for him and i'm looking forward to see uh potentially where they can go down the line with this i would i would like to see them you know kind of bring back the thing with them and the elite uh you know, at some point in the near future. So that's pretty much it, guys. So I'll hit that subscribe to the channel. Subscribe so you guys know. Peace.